Good morning, everyone. My name is Jyoti from Life of PhD. Today we have uh, Ulrich Roman from Ida. Uh, good morning, Ulrich. Good morning. And thank you for accepting my invitation. Thank and, you very much uh, for inviting me. Yeah. And uh, I like to tell my uh, viewers that I'm doing my PhD at DTU Technical University of Denmark. And while we are uh, working as a PhD, uh, in uh, Denmark, actually, PhD is considered as employment, and all the employees have to be option to join a union, and that brings Ida into a picture. There are many unions in Denmark, and Ida is one of them. So today, I have invited, and I talk to. I'm going to talk to Ulrich to know more about Ida and why Ida is different than uh, many other unions available in, uh, in the Danish labor market. So. Ulrich, uh, I like to for our viewers. Can you introduce yourself and uh, your current role and tell us more about Ida so that uh, it uh, create much more information for our PhD students and people who are watching this video. Sure. Thank you, Jojo, and thank you for inviting me and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, Ida is, as you said, it's a union and it's also sometimes we say it's like a community for people with the same, same background. It's for people, members with a STEM background. So it's more than 125,000 uh, people who has a degree from university within science, engineering, math or, or technology. And, uh, and, and my role in EDA is to make sure that we develop new services and new events for different groups of members at EDA. And during the last two years, I have uh, specifically been looking into a group called PhDs and Young Scientists, and that's where I have met you. So my role right now is to make sure that we have uh, some interesting stuff for this, uh, this group of, of members. And... Um, and I would, of course, like to, to talk more about that specifically. Now we are talking to PhDs and, and young scientists. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, why would somebody join either not other unions of label in a, in a, in a Danish uh, labor market? Well, first of all, maybe I'd like to say why it, the, the unions are so uh, common in, in Denmark, because I know many of your viewers would come from countries where it might not be that common to, to join a union. Uh, more than 80% of uh, wage earners in Denmark are actually signed up in a union. And uh, what is very normal in Denmark is that uh, the conditions on the labor market is agreed between the unions and the em employers. Uh, so there's not so much legislation and not so much uh, government uh, involved. And that's why for most Danes, it's, it's, it's very normal to be a part of a union. And what we've done in Denmark is that we have kind of developed different unions for different kind of, of groups on the labor market. So we have unions for people with a university degree. And uh, within different university degrees, we have a specific union for people with uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. And, and that's, that's EDA. Unfortunately, we have a, a, a lot of people coming out of university with these degrees. So, so it's, it's kind of grown. So, so it would be kind of normal for an engineer in Denmark to, to sign up at EDA. Um, what we do and, and why people sign up is, is different kind of services. First of all, we, we help to have a good working condition at the labor market. And that's kind of the tradition in Denmark. So, so we help make sure that you get the right salary, that you get your, your benefits like a holiday and maternity leave and stuff like that. And we do that both uh, collectively. So if you're publicly um, employed, then the, we will help you with, with your with your situation there. And if you're privately employed, we can help you individually. So we have uh, a lot of uh, counselors uh, with uh, um, legal counselors that, that can help you look at your contract and, and stuff like that. So, so basically your working conditions, that would be the traditional uh, part of a union. But also we have uh, career counseling. Uh, so uh, for instance, now I'm working with PhDs. I know that uh, the situation right now in Denmark is that, that when you finish your PhD in Denmark, then uh, nine out of 10 of you uh, would be looking for jobs outside academia. And, and I realized talking through, uh, to a lot of PhDs that, that 
that might be a bit uh, frightening because what's going on outside academia is not always something that you know when, you, when you're working hard inside the university. So, so one of the things that, that we do in EDA is we try to connect uh, you young scientists to uh, companies uh, outside academia and, and, and that's uh, something we've been working together with uh, you and I, Jyoti. So that's been a pleasure. So, so I'd say working conditions, salary, helping getting the, the next job is some of the most important uh, um, issues that, that we help uh, PhDs with. But, but also we know that, that uh, or through my work, I found out that PhDs uh, have, have other pains. Uh, we realized that especially people coming from abroad might be kind of lonely. They work hard at the universities, so, so it's, sometimes it's difficult to get new people. So, so another thing we've been doing together with the PhD Association at DTU is to make some social events. So that could also be a part of EDA. Uh, we have had uh, a quiz night at uh, DTU, and that was really a pleasure. And uh, great fun. It um, doesn't always have to be something about your subject and uh, working and studying hard. could also be uh, meeting up with other EDA members for uh, two or three hours, having a free beer and a meal and, and a quiz. Uh, so that's, that's also part of the things that we're working on and, and I have been working on. Uh, you mentioned there are around more than 100,000 members in EDA. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how do I do uh, networking with other, uh, uh, what are the professional networking opportunity available through IDA where I like to improve my networking circle? Well, the, the different possibilities, actually what IDA is really good at is, is that we have more than 50 professional networks, mm -hmm. uh, network, and, and that is for people who have maybe studied or working within the same field. For instance, if, if you're building huge bridges in concrete, we have a network for all the engineers and, and scientists uh, in, that are into that field. So if, if you're working with that, either as a student or a PhD or working in a, a big company, then you meet up and have uh, social gatherings and you have uh, gatherings where you have people coming, uh, flying in and, and, and talking to you about the latest science. So we have these kind of networks built around specific topics. Uh, and, and I'm sure that, that most of you will find uh, a network or two that's uh, interested, that, that suits your topic. We have uh, either chemistry, we have either IT and stuff like that. And we even have sub, sub communities. Um, and also when I talk to members, that's one of the things they mentioned that they really like about EDA is the possibility to meet others within your field. So you, you make sure, especially if you're new in Denmark, that, that, mm -hmm. that you meet the companies and stuff like that through the network. And we also actually have a PhD network. Um, but what you have in common there is that you have a PhD so, so you you might find the PhD network is, is a way into to to uh, to see our events and and also meet other PhDs, but not maybe specifically within your field. So, so that that different possibilities. And thank you for asking that. So I didn't forget that. <laughs> and um, Rick, uh, you mentioned that uh, we can get help with the negotiation, self mm -hmm. negotiation. We can also get help with the CVs. Yeah. There's a lot of webinars you organize through where you bring consultant and all. But how about uh, workplace conflicts? If uh, I have uh, some conflicts with the employer, where, where does EDA come into picture? Whom should we contact? Can we contact union or should we try to solve it through employer? You can always contact the union also before you try to solve it with your employer. Of course, we hope that, that you solve it before it gets to a real conflict because that would also be the Danish way of, of solving things. But, but we, have, uh, we have a lot of lawyers and actually what the lawyers do is sometimes they bring these conflicts to, to, to the court and, and, and that's uh, fortunately that's not something that happens every day but it's part of, of, of uh, being a member as well. You can get, uh, you can get uh, legal uh, help and, and, and people see that as, as a huge benefit because if you were to buy a private lawyer that would be a really costly uh, mm -hmm. affair and, and, and our lawyers already have a good uh, would you say uh, communication with with some of the big companies in Denmark? So often we avoid the, the conflicts and 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 find good solutions together. Uh, we advise all our members when they sign up for a new job to to send us their contracts. So we look through the contracts with our members, and sometimes 
uh, we find if there's something that might be a problem later, we find it already in the contract and we make sure that the contract is good. And also for the employers, they, f they find it good that, that they have a good negotiated contract. So, so fortunately, we do not have that many conflicts, but, but in case we do, we can also help you. That really uh, confirmed that uh, Denmark, Denmark is one of the happiest place on a <laughs> world to work with because we have less conflicts because people try to solve it at very early stage of uh, yeah i think i think uh, that's that's part of the good part of this mm -hmm. this union thing in denmark that but that also we try to solve it uh, between the unions and the companies instead of uh, bringing it to the government and so the government have to to make laws about everything they, mm -hmm. we, we can solve it ourselves that's that's the point of the danish model mm -hmm. By joining the union, do we have any additional benefits? For example, uh, for example, ACAS unemployment benefit or insurance benefit. I hear that when people join union, they also get advantage uh, outside this uh, career or contract. What are what are the benefits of joining Ida? Yeah. We have other benefits since we are 125,000 very interesting members. Then, for instance, uh, we have the cheapest insurance you can get in Denmark. That's because the insurance company, they know that engineers, they look after their stuff. <laughs> so, so actually, uh, you might find that our insurance company is more than 30% cheaper than if you buy insurance outside. Uh, and, and that's a good reason for that. So, so also many of our members, they, they like either because they save a lot of money on their insurances. Uh, and 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 when we are so many members, we also have some some banking benefits. So if mm -hmm. uh, if you join bank through EDA, it's not an EDA bank, but it's a, a company that we work together with, then you also might find some some good uh, stuff there. And and actually, we have benefits uh, concerning uh, traveling and hotels and and stuff like that. So that's that's why I both call it a union and a community because when you have a community of of, of talent and, and, and important persons like engineers and scientists, then we also get other benefits for you. Yeah. Then you mentioned ACAS, and it's important for, for people just coming to Denmark to realize that union and ACAS is not the same. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make sure that you have unemployment benefit, uh, for instance, after you finish your PhD, then it's important that you sign up both in a union and an ACAS. And, uh, Ida has a cooperation with uh, an ACAS called Academic on this ACAS or AKA, mm -hmm. uh, which we would uh, um, recommend, but but it's up to you to choose uh, which ACAS it's, it's it's most relevant for you. But but please make sure that that you that you sign up both places because if you're out of job, we can help you find a job, but we cannot pay your benefits. That's uh, that's the the ACAS thing. That's really actually useful information. I think a lot of us they didn't know about it. Especially cost ACAS and uh, unemployment benefit, and uh, even the cost of insurance uh, saving mm. 30 percent is a big, uh, big mm. thing for joining union. Thank you for that. Mm. And, uh, if and somebody about is... about ACAS, sorry about ACAS. I think what many people in Denmark experience is that that when they finish their master or when they finish their PhD, there's often a uh, like two or three months before you you start your new job and get your first salary and and just getting benefits from egg case for two or three months that would cover more than than, than five or six years of, of of your of your membership fee so for most people it's a, it's a good uh, it's a good business case to to sign up for egg case and and the same with with EDA because mm -hmm. the money you just save for instance in your insurance is, is often as much as as you have to pay to be a member uh, that makes me really curious. Uh, how can somebody join Ida? What is the procedure, and what is the right time to join? Yeah, I think that when you are, if you are a student, um, now we're talking most to PhDs, and when we're a PhD in Denmark, you are employed. So, so if you are a student, you can you can become a student member. If somebody is watching this and, and they're doing their masters in Denmark, mm -hmm. and that's a very cheap membership, and, and and we recommend that you sign up every time because you get the benefits without almost having to pay anything. And when you are employed, we uh, recognize that you you get paid. So so it's it's a bit more expensive, and you have like a common membership or a normal membership. And uh, I think that you should uh, sign up right away because you never know when you have this conflict with your company, with your with your your company, or, and you never know when you have to look to in our know, wage salary uh, system and stuff like that. And also, we know that that PhDs have great help from our career counselors when 
trying to find out what's next step after PhD. So how to do this CV stuff, how to approach Danish companies and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I, I th actually what you can do, all of you watching this, is that you can always have three month membership for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that because we know that most people after the three months, they are quite pleased and, and, and they choose to stay. So you can actually have three months where you can try out our, our career guides and, and, uh, and, um, and stuff like that. And if you choose to stay, then it's approximately, it's a little less than 300 kroner a month to be a member, but your union uh, salary in Denmark is tax deductible. So, so after taxes, you would pay uh, around 200 kroner every month for a EDA membership. Uh, thank you, Ulrich. I think uh, we have a lot of information. And uh, uh, what are the upcoming events actually where uh, people can attend? You said uh, you are planning some events in coming future. Yeah, and uh, fortunately, I've been doing events with you mm -hmm. for for now two years, and it's been a, a huge pleasure. And one of the things mm -hmm. that we have developed together is is the something we call EDA PhD day mm -hmm. and we do that uh, one time every year and PhD day is a whole day where you 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 come here at EDA at mm -hmm. uh, Copenhagen and we have invited a lot of companies so there's a possibility or, or opportunity to meet some of the companies that might be interested in you actually PhD day is, is, is for people that are almost finished their PhDs and wondering what's going on outside academia maybe I could get a job in, in a company or on the public sector for, for that case uh, so PhD day is, is about how to approach uh, Danish companies and and actually meet the companies how to do CVs and stuff like that and, and just help people get their mindset from the PhD out in, in the industry but uh, that would be in February 21 next time we do so we do that approximately one time a year in Copenhagen and if you're in Aarhus uh, in Jutland then uh, it's uh, in November at uh, Aarhus University um, so that's for people that that are almost at, it's finished or maybe one or two years in, in the PhD. And if you're just about to start a PhD or just started a PhD, then we recommend uh, we have a short introduction uh, meeting, just an online thing uh, in the, the beginning of October. We have a Danish version and an English version. And it's just called PhD, get a good start. And uh, that's specifically about some of the, the stuff that, that might be uh, difficult for PhDs about how to, how to plan your time and how to not uh, develop stress. And, and uh, there's a lot of things that we would like to help people. And also, of course, uh, get a, the right contract and, and know the legal stuff about uh, the Danish labor market. And I also mentioned the quiz night. Uh, we would love to do that again this fall, but we haven't got any uh, specific dates uh, since uh, COVID-19 has, has ruined our planning just uh, a bit. So so what I do recommend is that, that, that you being a member and have a look at our website once in a while. We try to, to gather all our information specifically for the PhDs at a website called eda.dk slash PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, that's both a Danish and an English version. Mm -hmm. So I hope you, you'll make your way around there. And, and anyways, some of the stuff we do in the cooperation with the, the PhD association at DTU. So, so you might also be invited through that membership. So I mean, these events are open for everybody. You don't need to be the member. Yeah, okay. they are open. Yeah. But if you're not a member, be aware, we might approach you and ask if you if you want to be a member. But uh, but we don't uh, force anybody. And, and that's important also in, in this talk to say that being a member of a union in Denmark is, of course, totally voluntarily. And um, sometimes people, they they are not wage earners anymore. They start their own companies. And what happens then is that they join another community for people having a company. So, so it's not everybody in Denmark that's part of a union, but, but people that are employees are often a part of a union. And it's all, also, of course, voluntarily. And it's, it's not an information you need to share with anybody. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's up to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we've covered most of my questions. And yeah, that's great. I think it's uh, it's a lot of information and uh, it's very useful information where I think people can um, uh, consider while they are deciding which union to join. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, thank you for actually accepting and uh, having this talk. I think uh, 
uh, I'd like to thank everybody also who actually attended this. And I hope uh, now people can take much more well-educated decision when which uh, union to join. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. for uh, this uh, conversation. And uh, thank you. see you soon.